Chair Goodman, uh, members of the committee, I'm Ari Cohn. I work for the post-prison education program. Uh, I signed in pro only because I'm hopeful that some amendments can be made to improve the bill. Uh, staff is handing out two documents that I asked uh, them to hand out. One is what I call a fiscal impact uh, document. And the other is a copy of a lawsuit that was brought against the DOC by Columbia Legal Services. Uh, and the, DO, the cost of taxpayers on that lawsuit was $1 million. And actually, there's oversight on the DOC ongoing and requirements to the physical plan at the women's prison uh, added to the million. But the check that was written was a million. And my, uh, my concern about this bill, uh, in fact, before I express my concern, I want to just uh, thank everyone for what's been obviously a Herculean effort. I actually I worked here in 2004, and, and the Post-Prison Education Program is 11 years old, and I was involved in the SSB 6308 Reentry Task Force, where this first came up in 2006, and I don't think I've ever seen an effort like this before, and it's amazing, and thanks. Um, the, uh, the concern, though, is, is that the ombuds, as it stands now, won't be able to bring litigation. And I think that's, I think, I just would ask that you consider the fact that it being excluded from this legislation doesn't mean that, let, that lawsuits won't be brought. Uh, and if you look at the fiscal impact, statement, you'll see in 2016 alone, 9 million nine hundred seventy-eight thousand nine hundred seventy-nine dollars paid out. And the Attorney General's office spent $23,211,301 defending the DOC to the point that, quote unquote, only nine million nine hundred was paid out. Um, that's just huge. Uh, the, I, I'd, I'd like to see this looked at by the legislature as not a stakeholders versus a DOC thing, but an issue of taxpayers versus DOC and fiscal responsibility. Uh, amending this as it stands now to include the ability for an ombuds to uh, bring litigation when necessary, I think it's just something that, that will benefit taxpayers from one end of the state to the other. Um, and leaving that out, is, there's no advantage to that. Uh, there's one, one line, I didn't write this fiscal impact statement, it came from Disability Rights Washington, and, and I love it though. And I love the line that says, collaboration avoids litigation. I really love that, and I, and I think that if you have the right to litigate in the hands of the ombuds, then you won't have private lawyers and other entities like Columbia bringing litigation at the rate that this document shows it's coming. And the last comment I would like to make, I mean, it's obvious that everybody's agreed that, the, that this independent system needs to be employed. But this lawsuit, if you look at it, uh, it shows that the existing grievance system doesn't work. At every single level, if you just review the defendants, you'll see that line staff were defendants, the superintendent was a defendant, the prison administrator was a defendant, the deputy director of the prison's division was a defendant, and the secretary was a, was a defendant. It failed at every, the grievance system failed at every single level of the Department of Corrections. Um, so I, I hope that you'll amend this to include the right uh, for the ombuds to bring litigation when necessary. I, I think this is a fiscal responsibility issue, and I really am appreciative of your efforts. It's been amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for your great work, too, uh, helping to educate prisoners coming out. Uh, any uh, questions? <laughs> Thanks to all of you for uh, terrific uh, uh, responses here. It's going to be very uh, helpful to us uh, putting together final.